Welcome to Meet the Candidate. My guest for this session is Mike Vasca, candidate for Attorney General. Uh, welcome, Mike. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, this is the Get Acquainted interview. Just start with telling us about where did you grow up and, and first go to school. I grew up in uh, Redmond, Washington. Uh, my family moved out here when I was five, uh, just a little bit before what was known as the Boeing bust. Uh, where the economy tanked, a time of also racial uh, tension. Um, and uh, I went to public high school. Uh, my father was a refugee from World War II. Um, so I, I can't, can't kind of say it because it's true. I grew up in an immigrant soccer community. He was very active in bringing youth soccer to our area. And a lot of his friends were also immigrants and some were refugees like he was. Um, and uh, I was the first in my family to go to college. Uh, I went, uh, I kind of hit the jackpot. I went to Stanford on a full financial aid scholarship, uh, and um, that's obviously in California. And uh, I went to law school. Uh, I'm a lawyer. Went to law school in Chicago at the University of Chicago, and then came back to Seattle, where I've been practicing law for 30 years. Okay. What what was uh what was your first job experience? You know, everybody has some time when they first learned that money is connected to effort. What was yours? Well, I, there may have one, been one before it, but probably not. Um, when I was in second grade, um, and I will date myself here because this is, this was quickly uh, something that didn't happen. Um, uh, you know, we would go down to our uh, elementary school. And they'd stick us on the bus in the summer, and we'd go pick strawberries mm -hmm. um, because there was a demand for seasonal labor, and that was, you know, probably 15 miles from my house. Um, and uh, I just remember my, my dad was a really tough father because of his upbringing, um, mm -hmm. you know, as a, well, he, he was slave labor to the Nazis during World War II as a young boy. So he believed in working really hard, and he thought it would be great for his kids to go pick strawberries. And it was a really interesting job, but they paid 25 cents for a flat. And if you know what a flat is, it's, it's a big, big tray. It's not one little thing. 25 cents a flat, and it took quite a while to pick a flat. And he, even he felt sorry for us. So he said, I'll double your wages. Every, every quarter you make, I'm going to double it. Um, so that was my first job, and it was, it was a really hard job. And I've been very lucky that every job after that, whether it was paper route or cleaning equipment or working at Safeway as, as, a, as a clerk uh, up to being a lawyer, has been a better job than the one before it. So I've, I've had a good progression since picking those strawberries. <laughs> but it sounds like, I suppose you probably did eat a little bit of the fruit while you were picking. Well, you don't really want to ask those, ask about those stories. I'm, I'm sure the statute of limitations. Of, well, kids will eat a lot of strawberries, but um, strawberries pretty soon uh, disagree with your your body. <laughs> so yes, we ate a lot of strawberries. They were yeah. it was encouraged, but there's only so many strawberries you can eat in a six hour you know shift. That's true, and besides, you want to fill your flat. Well, so you've you've sure. studied in a couple of different states. Are there some other kinds of travel or maybe volunteering experiences that have helped shape how you how you approach your practice as a lawyer? Um, well, we have traveled quite a bit. I've actually, um, there was a time when I was traveling for work to the East Coast a lot and to Europe somewhat less frequently, but quite a bit. Um, I actually spent a bunch of time working on 
an antitrust case in France, uh, which is very interesting. Um, so getting to see a, a country as a tourist versus as a business person is, is interesting. Um, so yeah, I've done a fair amount of travel. I think probably the two most interesting things, well, there's, there's more than two, but two I'll comment on are, uh, my wife and I went to Burma um, 20 years ago when it was a closed country, but they opened it for a year for tourism. So we got to see a country that um, George Orwell wrote about, or it was the inspiration for his book, 1984, uh, Burma was because he was stationed there and it was very um, closed off from the rest of the world. It was almost like in, in, a, in a kind of a time warp and just really, really interesting. Um, and the other trip, we took our family on a sabbatical to uh, volunteer uh, in Africa, in Tanzania. And uh, my, my sons were, I think, eight and ten at the time. And um, so our jobs were to teach English. Uh, and, and English is, is the second official language of that country. And it's really important that kids learn English because if they don't learn English, they can't go on to higher, higher schooling. So I, I, one of my sons and I taught in a grade school and my wife and my other son taught in an orphanage. And of course we lived there and during weekends we would go do the fun touristy things, but uh, very, very good experience for my kids who, um, came back and realized how how fortunate they were to live here uh, and how we didn't always have the nicest things but they were way nicer than the things that people had in Africa. Wow that's that's quite an experience to give your your children at that age. What are some things that you brought back from both of those that that you have maybe applied in your your law practice? Well um, uh, you know, I'd say my experience in France um, uh, was fascinating because I'm, I'm practicing law. Of course, I have French lawyers that I'm working with, but I'm practicing law in a, in a different language under a different system, very different in many ways from the, um, the British American system. And um, there are a lot of similarities in, in sort of the substantive law, but, but how everyone relates to each other. Is, is was just very very different and um i actually came back not, not that i've ever really questioned what a great legal system we have and it, you know it's as i always tell clients it's it's administered by human beings who make mistakes but it's a self-correcting system and our, our system is and it works exceptionally well at providing justice um, there are always exceptions and those get all the coverage um, and I, I really came back, even though France is a very well-established and respected legal system, having just that much more appreciation for um, for our own mm -hmm. system. Uh, Tanzania, that's a you know that's maybe not a third world country, but it's definitely uh, you know a, a country where uh, the rule of law, let's just say, is not quite as well established. And it's you know the rule of law is kind of like air we breathe in and water we drink when it's there you don't think about it so we expect the rule of law will always be there but then when things come up in this country or overseas and it's not there then you really come to appreciate it well i think i'm going to go to that last question and give you a, a the last two minutes to <laughs> answer the question of how do you see the office of attorney general and why vote for Mike Vasca for Attorney General? Well, uh, the Attorney General's office is one of the largest law firms in the state. Um, it's it, in the past has been run as a professional law office. Um, many of us believe that it's now being run as a partisan office. And um, I'm running as a professional lawyer for 30 years uh, to bring professionalism back to the office so we can protect the rule of law or defend the rule of law so we can protect our communities and protect all of you. Uh, the rule of law is essential to that. As I mentioned, my dad came here as a refugee. Um, his family farm was taken by the communists in the Soviet Union. He was born on a collective farm. Um, he was taken from his family by the Nazis and he was almost captured and sent back by Stalin to, uh, to spend time in um, the concentration camps. 
Um, I, my, my father was saved from that fate uh, by the grace of a Lutheran minister, but he taught me that the rule of law is what makes our country special. And I'm running for attorney general to make sure that we do everything we can to defend the rule of law in our state. Okay, that's a good good conclusion there. Mike, thank you for joining me today and uh, uh, good luck with your campaign. Well, thank you, it's been a pleasure. Have a nice day. 90 million Christians are eligible to vote. 40 million didn't. That's 45% of eligible Christians not voting. We can change that. We believe We Vote was designed to arm people of faith with information on candidates. And how they line up with biblical and constitutional principles. It's simply WeBelieveWeVote.com. We're on a mission to rev up the 2020 election. Tell your friends, your neighbors, and especially your pastors to rev up. Be an educated voter. Arm yourself with truth based on the Word of God. 2020, rev up. Register, educate, vote. Rev up. Rev up. Rev up 2020.